Hey y'all, come on in. It's Saturday night. I'm in the kitchen and I'm going to start prepping my food for Sunday. Okay, I've got some chicken uh, drumsticks all cleaned up and ready to uh, prepare. I'm going to do lemon chicken uh, drumsticks out of these and I've got a piece of pork over there that I'm going to uh, do a pork roast. So we're going to have some uh, pulled pork with barbecue sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> season up these um, chicken drumsticks and it's a real simple process um uh, i'm going to start with a i'm going to sprinkle on here about a tablespoon of uh lemon pepper seasoning let's get them good and sprinkled up there also i am going to put some garlic powder on them okay good teaspoon of garlic powder Sprinkle, 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 then I'm going to rub them like I love them when I get everything on them. Okay, uh, the other thing I'm going to put on them is a little bit of soul food season. It's a pretty good season, so if it tastes real good, I go ahead and use it. You know me and seasoning, so about a teaspoon of that. That goes my flub for the night. I got it in early tonight, didn't I? Okay. So the other thing, of course, you know I'm going to put some of my Gold Mountain, um, that Gold Mountain season. I'm going to put some of that on there. I'm just going to, I'm going to drizzle on a good teaspoonful, or I'm sorry, a good tablespoonful, y'all. Okay. I'm sorry, I, did I say a teaspoon or tablespoon? It's late in the night. It's uh, a teaspoonful. <clears throat> And I'm also going to put a uh, tablespoon full of that, uh, remember this uh, season that I bought, I told you I got it for a good deal, that polio, chicken flavored bouillon. So I'm going to be putting about a uh, good tablespoon full of that on there. Just going to drop it right on there like that. That ought to do it. And so what I'm going to do with all this season, now that i got everything on there, I'm just going to rub it in real, real good. And what I'm going to do with this is once I get it all marinated up, I'm going to sit it in the refrigerator and I'll pop it in the oven tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, hang on one second. Okay, the one thing that I almost forgot, usually I put some fresh lemon juice on it, but since I don't have any, I'm just going to squirt it with a little bit of, uh, probably about a teaspoon of, of lime juice, so it's not going to hurt a thing. Okay, because I want those, uh, I want that lemony tart taste on these wings. I'm just going to put just a little bit more, and the reason I don't put too, too much of this, because it's really, you know, of course it's salty. So what I need to do here now that I got it all sprinkled on. I'm just going to rub these really good. So these <coughs> chicken legs will be nice and seasoned by tomorrow. And then after I get them all nice and seasoned up and marinated overnight, I'll pop them in the oven for about an hour and a half and they'll cook through and be nice and tangy. We'll have us some good old, we'll call them lemon lime or drumsticks. Um, Got some company coming tomorrow, and because I've been out all day long, um, I'm sure Lady T has probably already got her video up, but we went to Raleigh today. This is all part of my uh, Black History uh, research, so she wanted to drive me up there, so I was glad to be able to get up there today. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to let these, y'all know they're going to be good by tomorrow. So what I'll do with these now that I got them all rubbed down and all the seasoning on them, I am going to put foil over them, wrap them real, real tight. So I'll keep all that flavor in there. And then I am going to uh, put them in the refrigerator until tomorrow morning. And I'll get up early in the morning and I will get them all cleaned up. So get that glove off. And then I'm just going to sit these off to the side. <clears throat> okay. Now, this is a pork roast. So this is a pork roast that is really good for pulled pork. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this seasoned up the same way. And then I'm going to um, 
let it marinate, sit in the refrigerator overnight, and get up in the morning, put it in the oven, and probably have to cook it about a couple hours, but it'll be good and um, seasoned up. So I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle it. Hang on one minute. Let's see. What I'm, what I'm going to do with this is that um, dry chicken bouillon cube. I don't have any pork seasoning, but this will do just as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit it on this side. I'm going to hit it with a little bit, just a tiny bit. You know, I like that jerk flavor, so this is going to be my secret weapon on this one tonight. Okay. And I'm going to hit it with some teaspoon of garlic. And this is about a, um, I'll say a three, maybe four pound. Yeah, four pound uh, piece of meat. So I'll, I'll put a tablespoon of, um, a teaspoon rather of the jerk seasoning and a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of my um, soul food seasoning. I'm gonna do both sides. Okay. And then of course I'm gonna hit it with the gold mountain seasoning. A gold mountain season on there, not a lot. Teaspoon on each side, and because this is going to be a um, barbecued piece of meat with barbecue sauce, the secret, the other secret weapon in here is going to be about a teaspoon of vinegar on each side. So I'm just going to see how I'm drizzling that on there. Not a whole lot of vinegar, and I'm going to poke it. I'm going to poke it. I'm going to let all it season run down through there. Just poke it. Poke it, poke it, poke it. Some chefs probably looking at this having fit, but I'm a different kind of chef. Okay. I know exactly what I'm doing. So now I got the soul food seasoning on there. And this is just a little off brand name uh soul food seasoning I got from the dollar store. And a little bit of jerk seasoning. I got on there. Oh, good. The camera did just what I wanted it to do. It jumped back so that I can get stuff into frame here. Okay. Soul food seasoning. Teaspoonful. Garlic powder. Half a teaspoon on each side. Gold Mountain seasoning, if you got it. Teaspoon on each side. And a half a teaspoon, about a teaspoon, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of vinegar on each side. So everything one teaspoon on this piece of meat and by tomorrow morning that season would have soaked in there real good now i'm gonna get me another glove here i'm just gonna use the end of this glove because i have to take these rubs off and off so i got me another glove rub it in on that side i'm gonna flip it over and i'm just gonna repeat the process I'll put in the same seasoning on there and I'm just going to rub it in again. So hang on. Okay, so I've got that uh, piece of pork all seasoned up and rubbed down. So all I got to do now is just uh, for the chicken and for the pork, just to put some uh, foil over it and slide it in the refrigerator. And it's going to um, stay natural in the morning. So it'll have a nice 10 12 hour marinade on it. And then the other thing that I'm going to, the other entree that I'm going to be fixing is um, some macaroni and cheese with the shrimp. So I'll sh let y'all see that start to finish. But that's all for the uh, prep of the meat. And I'm just letting y'all see that. This is just when you have the time that you can do it. Or if you just want to, um, you know, ease, ease the uh, work off on yourself at night like I'm doing. Because I'm really exhausted from being out all day in Raleigh. So that's the end of prepping that meat. So next time you see it, it's going to be on a flavor train now. Good Sunday morning, everybody. It's me. I'm in the kitchen getting ready to get that Sunday dinner going today. Okay, I'm back on track. I'm going to make um, some um, macaroni and cheese with shrimp. So it'll so be shrimp, macaroni, and cheese. I've got a pound bag of food line shrimp. There's about 70 small shrimp in here. I've already cleaned them up, took the shells off of them, and thank God they already come deveined. So here they are. 
That's one pound of shrimp that's going to go in there. I'm going to make a cheese sauce with one pound of cheese. I got to use two pounds of cheese to make up my one pound. I didn't have quite enough in that bag of food line cheese. I thought it was a pound bag. It's only eight ounces. Y'all know I'm trying to back off on cheese. I didn't have. The only cheese I had was some sharp cheddar cheese slices. Any kind of cheese that you have when you need like a pound of cheese, just throw it in there. It'll work. I'm going to show you how you make it work. So it doesn't have to be all block cheese or whatever. So fortunately, I got enough. So I'm going to have a pound of uh, elbow macaroni noodles, a pound of shrimp, and a pound of cheese is going to go into here. So now I'm going to start putting it together. I've got my uh, milk on already over here for my cheese sauce. You know, I like to make that mac and cheese with cheese sauce. Remember, start that milk out. Let it start to get warm slowly. Don't want it up too high, so I'm going to go ahead and start that cheese sauce. Because the other thing that I've got to do is get those shrimp sauteed. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do with the shrimp, I'm going to be putting, yeah, you see it, a small onion, which comes up to about a good half a cup, which is perfect. Okay, I am going to start putting my seasoning on my shrimp. Of course, I'm going to put some, about a teaspoon, a teaspoon of garlic on that shrimp. And you notice I got it on a paper towel. I'm trying to make sure I drain all the excess water out of these shrimp because I don't want that, uh, when I start cooking them, I don't need any excess water in it. Um, because when I start baking that mac and cheese, I don't want any water residue showing up on the scene, okay? I'm going to hit it with about a teaspoon of this, uh, soul food seasoning you know me we got to have that extra flavor going on in there and i am going to put some of my uh some of that dry chicken flavored bouillon on there everything for the flavor so a teaspoon of that's going to go in there you don't have to heavily season these shrimp you know sh shrimp soaks in seasoning real good so i'm just going to season them up while they're right in here uh, draining so they're good and drain. So just make sure, um, you know, if they got a little shell on, make sure you get all the shell off. If somebody wants to bite on the shell, even though it may happen, apologize and keep going if that happens. Okay? But just try to go through them and make sure that you don't have uh, any shell. See, I found one. So the entire time that I'm uh, seasoning, I'm still looking for shells. Make sure there's no shell. Um, okay. All righty. Alrighty, alrighty. I think those shrimp are good and seasoned up. So I'm going to give them We want When they go in there, we want them all. Okay, so what I've got over here in my skillet, I melted a um, stick of butter or margarine. So I'm going to go ahead and start sauteing those onions. And we're just not going to cook them, cook them, cook them. We're just going to saute them enough to get them going. So they go into the uh, macaroni and cheese. So I got my uh, cheese is melting up nicely. Melting up nicely. I'm loving it. So I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, onions and get my onions and uh, shrimp going in the pan. You can start out with that heat pretty high. You don't want them. You don't want any juice in there. Just do not want any juice going on in there. Okay. And remember, when you're making your cheese sauce, keep it stirred, y'all. So I got that. Um, to make this cheese sauce, I, don't, I won't need quite as much um, cheese sauce for this as I would just a regular fan of mac and cheese because you got all that shrimp, but you got all the shrimp going in there. So I'm gonna let that. Uh, Cheese sauce to be to make get those shrimp in frame so you can see what I'm doing with the shrimp and the onions. See all that's gonna go in that mac and cheese. So the first time I had shrimp with macaroni and cheese was when my husband and I took a trip down to uh, Charleston. So I've added the onions in here. I don't know what other season they put in there, but it was really really good and I enjoyed it. And so I've been making it ever since. So remember now, keep that uh, cheese sauce stirred up, because you know what happens if you let it get too hot. Now that, that milk is going to curdle on you, and you do not want that to happen. So, so I need that on the big burner, so I'm going to put it on the big burner, get this back 
this cheese sauce back on this one. So, again, since I told you, I did not have all of the um, pound of cheese that I needed. So I had some extra sharp, um, I think they were food line cheese slices or somewhere I got them from. Anyway, they're sharp cheddar cheese slices, so we're going to use those. So they're not sharp, 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 but they'll be sharp enough, okay? So, we're going to get those, get everything in here and get it melted down. But you got to have that cheese sauce ready to go. And I've already got my noodles cooked and drained. You know how to just boil, I just did a pound box of noodles. That cheese get melted up in there. I always have it on the wrong side. Excuse my reach, y'all. Okay, so got that cheese sauce going. It's melting out pretty good. Y'all, see how that cheese sauce is it's melting real, real slow. So it's, it's melting out in there. So remember, keep that heat low now because you don't have to have it high. Because once the uh, milk gets hot enough, you're okay. So now that it's melted out pretty good, I'm gonna put me a tablespoon. That chicken flavor season in there. Check out, I need to check out my shrimp. Remember when I told you about the shrimp? When those shrimp get pinkish, they're ready. They are ready. And these are about ready over there. See that little pinkish color on them? They're about ready. They're good to go and very well seasoned. Wow. Whew. Yum, yum, yum. So, you don't want to cook those uh, shrimp all the way because you got to cook them some more and put them in the oven. So, I'm just about at the point now where I can go ahead and put this uh, macaroni and cheese, shrimp macaroni and cheese together. Um, let's see. Let's change burners right there. Okay, I'm going to be cooking it in uh, one of my trusted um, silver baking pans. Okay, do it right there. And I'm going to let you see. That's perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, I'm ready just about it to put this cheese sauce together. I got to get my cheese sauce a little bit uh, thicker. So I'm gonna say, hang on just a second. Let me go do a couple of things. I, I've got, oh yeah, I got to put about a tablespoon of flour in that cheese sauce to thicken it just a little bit. Or you can use cornstarch. Either one will work. So hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm back. That cheese sauce is just where I want it. It's just thick enough because it's got to cook through that macaroni and the uh, other ingredients. So in the cheese sauce, now remember, I got six cups of milk. One cup of that milk is pet evaporated. The other five cups of milk is just regular whole milk or skim milk or whatever you have in the fridge or whatever you use. Okay, so six cups of milk, one pound of cheese, one stick of butter, a tablespoon of that dry chicken broth mix, a teaspoon of black pepper, and that's it. So <clears throat> that's my cheese sauce. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to thicken this cheese sauce, um, I've put um, two tablespoons, well, a tablespoon and a half of um, flour. I just mixed it in. I mixed that tablespoon and a half of flour in about a, about a, between an eighth and a fourth of a cup. You know, you want it thick and pasty. I, I'm, I like to mix my flour in water and then pour it in. I don't like to put the dry flour in. Or if you have some, um, what do you call the stuff, the thickening agent. If you have a thickening agent, you just put it right on in there. You don't have to uh, break it down like I do with the flour. Okay, so that's what makes the cheese sauce. The milk, the cheese, the dry chicken broth mix, and some black pepper, and, of course, 
the flour to thicken. And that's as thick as that sauce. This is a perfectly thick uh, cheese sauce. Uh, and again, the cheddar cheese, the uh, cheese that I use was sharp cheddar cheese. Okay, it's ready, so I'm getting ready to put this uh, mac and cheese, uh, shrimp mac and cheese together. So I got my sauce here. I got my noodles. I told you I already cooked them ahead of time and got them all drained and ready. So this is a one pound box of uh, elbow macaroni noodles. So I'm just going to switch over here to my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start pouring in my cheese sauce into my so I'm going to pour almost all of it in because I need a little bit to get everything in. So I'm just going to mix, mix, mix. And this, let me tell you, you can eat this. You can stop it right here and eat it because that cheese, see how you have to leave that cheese sauce. You don't want it thick, thick, thick. You want it like that. So it'll be nice and creamy, okay? So we got that cheese sauce going. Now, I've got my, um, got my shrimp. I'm going to go ahead, you know, there's no, <coughs> nothing hard to do. Go ahead, that saute, that one pound of shrimp and that uh, one small onion or a half a cup of chopped onions, saute it in a stick of butter, season down with some um, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a sprinkle of that soul food seasoning. That's all you need. So I'm going to mix in the shrimp. And you don't want too many shrimp because you don't want to overpower the mac and cheese. You like a good mac and cheese. So this is just one of those good things that you could eat this with a salad or you could eat it by itself. It's such a good dish. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And like I said, there's about 70 little shrimp in there. <coughs> so you're bound to get a bite or two of shrimp every time you bite into that mac and cheese. So now, all I got left to do now, <coughs> y'all. Let me just switch this pan over here. Okay. Last but not least, get the rest of my little uh, <coughs> butter and goodie out of that pan. Y'all know I don't leave no goodie in the pan. I like it all in the dish. All in the dish, y'all. Get it all out. Get all that goodie out of that pan. Get it in the dish so you can get it on the table. So. One other thing that I do, probably don't need to, but I try to do it anyway just to make sure that the mac and cheese comes out because when I slice it, I want it to come out of the pan. I don't want to tear it up. I'm just going to hit it with a little pan spray. And it's butter flavor, so we're good to go. So let's see, make sure we have time here. I'm get my uh, baking pan here. I'm just going to pour all of it in just like that. We cooperate. I don't even have to scrape the pot this time. Not much. A little of it trying to stay in the pot. Come on out of there. A whole shrimp tried to stay back this time. <coughs> okay, so now, see how that looks? Okay. Got a little bit of cheese sauce left. And what I like to do is just take some of that rest of that cheese sauce. So that topping. And I'm going to hit it with a little something else, too, here. Let's see. <clears throat> Just going to take and smooth the rest of that cheese sauce right over top of that mac and cheese there. That's going to be some yummy, yummy eating. Kids are going to be real surprised. They like this dish. I haven't done this shrimp macaroni and cheese in a little while. You know what? I think the last time I did this was almost last Maybe last Christmas, but I didn't do it with the shrimp this Christmas. So, okay. <coughs> the other thing I'm going to hit it with, I got some bread, some Italian bread from. I'm just going to take and just dust it. I'm just going to dust it. Just dust it now because you know these things, uh, what do they say? We don't lie. We multiply. This stuff here will swell up on you, so you don't need a whole bunch just a little bit of something, just to give it a little crunch on top. And since I'm not going to put any more cheese, I think we got enough cheese because we need to maintain the integrity of the dish. So I just put a very little on that. So there it is. 
that's ready to go into the oven okay i'm not going to put it in the oven right now because it's like quarter to 12 and so that we won't have to keep reheating this what i'm going to do everybody's going to come to eat about three i only got to bake this about 40 30 45 minutes <clears throat> so i'm going to leave this sitting and i am going to put it in let's see 11 30 12 30 1 30. i'm going to pop it in the oven about quarter to two well about 1 30. So I got another couple hours of 12 one. So a couple hours from now, I'm going to put that in the oven and I'm going to bake it for, and you you be your own judge, 30 to 45 minutes. Because you don't want to cook it a long time because it's, everything's already cooked. We will just want this here to, um, to, to um, that cheese to melt down and sort of cook through those noodles and that shrimp and everything. Because remember, we don't roast shrimp tough anyway, but we left enough cooking for them so this dish is ready for the oven i'm gonna sit it to the back of the stove go ahead and clean up some of my mess around here and then uh when we come back we're gonna let y'all see what this uh looks like got my um remember the lemon pepper chicken last night got it out of the oven it's all ready to go the uh pork is still in the oven and uh later on i'll get some lima beans going and some white rice so i'll be back shortly so y'all go ahead and uh well, I didn't go to church again today. What's up with that? Anyway, if you're home looking at me do this, or if you're home sitting around doing whatever you do, keep on doing it because I'll be back. Hi, right, y'all. I'm back. I uh, just tilted the camera. Excuse that. Okay, I'm back. I just got a little cooking tip for you. I'm going to be doing some lima beans today as part of the menu for Sunday dinner. And remember, I'm cooking that pork roast, and I cooked some lemon uh, pepper chicken uh, legs, chicken legs. So, because, you know, normally when you cook meats like this, it has a lot of juice that comes off of it. So, what I'm going to do, I poured the lemon pepper chicken juice. Now I'm pouring some juice off of this uh, pork roast. Doesn't that look good? So I'm, I'm getting the pork roast is ready now. So I'm going to get ready to, uh, I'm going to let it sit here and rest a little while because I've got to slice it. I was going to do cool pork with it, but I think I'm just going to do sliced pork with um, barbecue sauce. So what I'm going to do with this juice off of that lemon chicken and off of that uh, pork roast, I am going to cook lima beans <clears throat> i got to cook some fresh ones i got this uh bag of food lion uh it's like a pound 12 by almost two pounds of lima beans i've already got about a pound already cooked that was left over from probably thanksgiving but i needed more than that so i'm gonna go ahead and cook the ones the fresh ones today and then when i finish with it i'm gonna put those leftover ones See, i had some leftover ones Remember I told you, keep those leftovers, put them in that freezer, and bag them up real good. And it already has plenty of meat and all that kind of stuff in it. All the stuff that we probably don't need, but that's fine. So I don't have to add any more meat because I'm getting using the broth off the chicken and off of the pork. And it's okay to mix chicken and pork once it gets done. So this is going to be some real tasty lima beans, and I guarantee I won't have to do anything else to this except maybe add, I'm going to put some water. I hope that thing will probably pop off. I'm going to add some more water to that. About another couple of cups of water. That should be enough water to cook that uh, pound or so of a pound and a half of beans. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the heat up high. Put that bag of beans in there. And that's all, I, it's just that simple. I mean, come on. It's just that simple to cook lima beans. This is, these are fresh frozen lima beans. Okay. And this is, of course, Full line brand, real good, like $2.39 for almost two pounds. I think it's like I said, a pound and 12 ounces. So the only other thing I'm going to add to it is a little black pepper because you know you got to have that black pepper in those lima beans. So that juice is very well seasoned. And I will taste it, of course, again to make sure all the seasons is in. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of black pepper in it. And, um, I have to run all the way across, across the other part of the room. But anyway, I want to put a lid on this, and I'm going to cook these lima beans for about an hour and a half. And after they finish cooking, I'm going to add the frozen ones to it, mix them together, and we're going to have us a great big old nice pot of lima beans to go with today's dinner. So let me run down the menu for us today. 
Uh, we're having the um, <clears throat> ma shrimp macaroni and cheese. And I'm doing the lemon pepper chicken drumsticks. And I'm going to do the sliced barbecue pork, some white rice, lima beans, of course, corn muffins, some bread pudding, iced tea, and some lemonade. Um, making this great big old meal today because let me tell you, i got to get back on my project. I might not cook, but maybe one more time next week. So this is a loaded video for y'all today. So I'm uh, the two main features so that you tune in. Now, I've never done the uh, macaroni and cheese with the shrimp, so that's a new one. And also, I've never done the uh, uh, sliced barbecue pork. So tune in on that recipe. I started it, remember last night? I, I seasoned it and let it marinate overnight. So I baked it this morning for three hours. It's ready. I've taken it out. I'm using the juices for my beans. Now I'm going to let it sit and rest for a good hour. That means, you know, just let it rest and absorb the seasoning and let it cool down because I need to slice it. And then I'm going to whip up some um, Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, pour over it, run it back through the oven for a few minutes, and it's going to be done. Okay, so we got the menu. We know what's coming up next. I'm going to let these beans go ahead and cook, and I'll be right back because I'm going to do a twist on some uh, bread pudding. Like I say, this is going to be a loaded video today, so hang on. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Bread pudding. Twist to the bread pudding. The bread that I had left over this time is raisin bread. So all this is all raisin bread and some raisin... Um, yeah, you know, just raisin bread. I didn't have any regular bread. So all this is raisin bread. Um, so I had lots of it left over. So we're going to make the bread pudding out of that. I had some applesauce. So I'm putting applesauce in there to break that bread down. I put a cup and a half of uh, applesauce. About eight slices of raisin bread. And I had one raisin flavored, raisin cinnamon bagel. Okay. So I always like to make my bread pudding with fruit. So this is a half a cup of blueberries. And the reason it's so varied is because this is what fruit I had. I wasn't going to go out to the store to get any more. So I got, say, eight slices of raisin bread, one bagel, a cup and a half of applesauce, half a cup of blueberries, and I'm going to add um, a tablespoon of vanilla flavor. And I've got some melted butter I'm going to add to it. Half a stick of melted butter. Pour that in there. Okay. And I am going to use, I think I'm just going to put probably a cup, cup and a half of sugar. So we're going to see how it works out. Because you know me, I'm going to taste this. I always taste your food to make sure that it's sweet enough, salty enough, pepper enough, or whatever enough. Because uh, I'm watching these cook shows, it beats me to pieces to see if one of those trained chefs have someone taste their food and somebody tell them there wasn't enough salt in it. What's up with that? I don't get it. So anyway, taste your food while you're cooking it before you put it into the oven or the skillet or the pan to boil it and fry it and certainly before you put it on the table. So this is a new twist like I said on bread pudding. So take notes y'all. You can make bread pudding out of anything just about as long as you got that bread as the base. You can put anything that you have in the kitchen in it that you like to taste uh, a little bit of nutmeg remember i told you nutmeg very little it will take over if you put too much just a couple of sprinkles just to give it that taste about a, not even an eighth about an eighth of a teaspoon full is all you need and as you can see this is good and wet um just keep mixing mixing it mix it to get it kind of smooth so I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes here, and when I come back, I'll show you how the end result is. Okay, y'all, we're back to the raisin bread. Let's backtrack on it a little bit. Okay, eight slices of raisin bread, one raisin bagel. This is a large raisin bagel. Uh, a cup and a half of sugar. A half a cup of blueberries. And also, what I didn't say to begin with, I don't know how you remember this. One cup of milk and two eggs. Got to go in there. And the surprise ingredient in here, I am using a half a box of golden batter 
golden butter rather cake mix so this is going to be a um cakey bread pudding that's what we're going to call it so that's the surprise element other than the applesauce that i'm putting in this uh, bread pudding so i'm not going to put it through the blender you're just going to mix it up real good so just put all your ingredients in there mix them up real good grease a pan and pour it in and bake it i'm gonna have to bake this probably one hour but you can check it depending on where you live you know the altitudes uh depend greatly on how long you bake things in the oven so there it is all mixed up so this is a surprise bread pudding i think it's gonna be yummy and then i've got some strawberry and um powdered sugar mixtures stirred up here that i'm gonna put on top so anyway i'm getting ready to pour it in the pan and put it in the oven i'll let y'all see it when it comes out Okay, y'all, I'm back. There it is. It's all done. Lima beans, white rice. There's that uh, shrimp macaroni and cheese, corn muffins, roasted pork with barbecue sauce, and good old lemon pepper chicken. It's all done, ready to go. The flavor train is in. Let me get out the way before the train run over me. So until I cook again, I'm going to say toodaloo, y'all. And the bread pudding is still in the oven. So I'll be done with this. Okay, bread pudding got to cook about another 10, 15 minutes so to cook in the middle. So it's already out. I know what I'm doing. Toodaloo. Love y'all. Y'all keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Love y'all. Toodaloo.